recording. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are speaking with Stefan Olsen. Um, he's a wheelchair tennis Paralympian and I'm just super excited to see him compete in Tokyo and he actually will be leaving tomorrow to head there. So um, we are just very appreciative of his time and just taking a little bit, a uh, little moment with us to speak um, before he goes compete or goes to compete. And just a little background on him. Um, he basically has broken so many records. He has 33 ITF titles, two singles and two double um, titles at Wimbledon, um, Paralympic gold in doubles um, with, I believe, Peter Wilkstrom. Is that correct? Yeah, almost. Wickstrom. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, that's close. Um, you have the most Swedish championship goals, um, golds. And finished the year as top 10 in between 2007 and 2012, and between 2015 and 2020, which is amazing. I commend you on all that you have achieved. And even more so, everyone, he, in terms of world ranking, he is number six in singles and number five in doubles, I believe. Um, and he also has a beautiful family, a wife and two children. Um, they're just so adorable and go look at his Instagram. You'll get to see some cute little videos and pictures. Um, I already had the pleasure of going through his Instagram <laughs> earlier. So thank you so much, Stefan, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. So um, the first question I kind of want to start with is, um, surrounding arthrogryposis. Um, we kind of wanted to hear about your journey about disability um, and maybe like when you were younger, did the doctors know about arthrogryposis or about the condition when you were born? They knew very little when I was born. I was born in uh, 1987, so they didn't really know too much about it. Um, so the first couple of months, uh, they just guessed pretty much what, what it was because I was pretty much when I, when I was born I was born like a Buddha statue you could say with, oh. with my leg crossed pretty much um, so there, there were so many like different symptoms and I think after five months they, they concluded that it must have been AMC so um, oh. now I got a not a fairly big one like minus basically based from the in my legs pretty much uh, I have some in my arms but you, you can't really see it if I don't show what it is basically so, and, so I, um, if you look at my childhood it's been quite easy I've, I've I, I lived all of my life at a how do you say that in English at the farmer resident basically so my my father was a uh, part-time farmer and a part-time uh, car mechanic. So uh, I had to struggle a lot. Like these kind of houses have uh, stairs everywhere. Like just going up to, to my room, I had to climb three stairs. Um, and with like 10, 15 steps in each one. So, so it, it's, been, uh, it's been a good journey for me to to learn how to do these things at an early age. So I never saw that as a problem, which is qu quite good for me, I think, now when I'm getting older. Gotcha. And when you were younger, did doctors um, recommend doing any type of surgery or did they like recommend any sort of strategies? Um, the strategies in the beginning was to try to straighten my legs out. Because if you, you, when I sit like a Buddha, you can't basically do anything so uh, <laughs> i had to do to do what do you call that in english and oh sorry my, my english is not the best at the moment i haven't been uh outside of uh, the country the, the, a lot no, this you're year you're doing so. great you're doing perfectly fine um they had to uh, what do you call that not, not concrete on my legs but like when you put on uh, plasters yeah yeah like a cast yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cast exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So they, that's how they straighten them back in my time, and it worked okay. Um, and then they, they did a lot of surgeries on my foot, try to get that like straight instead of standing on my toes like like I normally do now. Mm -hmm. um, but but it always 
got back to the same position, like st standing uh, on on just my toes, basically. So um, all the surgeries they did didn't really work because everything just went back as it, as it was supposed to be for me. So uh, <laughs> so it, it it's it's been working for me. But I mean, I'm glad that you're able to progress forward and you know, if you're playing wheelchair tennis, like the Paralympian you are, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so when you started um, tennis, I believe at the age of seven, um, yeah. tell us about that kind of journey going into sports. Um, like what motivated you to get into that area? Um, so this is actually when it, it started when I was four. Four. I went down to my, to my grandparents' house. And they were watching tennis, so I was like, "Ooh, that looks so much fun!" So I really, I really just started to dream already at four that I really want to play wheelchair tennis, well, yeah. at tennis at all. Um, and at that time, we didn't know that wheelchair tennis even existed or anything like that. So uh, my mom and dad just tried to to help me out as much as possible. So they they played a lot of beach tennis when we were at the beach or like just tennis inside uh, or and, and stuff like that but it didn't really work out too well and then we had a, uh, a training camp where I grew up uh, when I was seven and they included wheelchair tennis so I was just hooked I didn't go for lunch I didn't go for a break or anything I was always on the court and from there on it was just yeah this is my sport I've been trying so many different sports but tennis was perfect for me Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. I, I guess in your country, has it like been always pretty inclusive of people with disabilities in playing sports or like tennis, for example? Yeah, um, we always had a, it has been up and down with, with this. Um, some people in Sweden still think we're, we're, we're not athletes. They, they, they just see us as um, like just having fun. Um, which, which is a pity because the, the amount of training we do and most of the tennis players I, I play against, I, I beat basically, even if they're standing up because um, it works so well and like you can still use the same tactics as able bodies. So it's, it, yeah. it's a quite cool sport the, that way to, to show that, that it actually works. Like I serve, I'm, the way I serve, I serve over a hundred miles per hour. So, I mean, that's okay for me and I think a lot of people get impressed when they see see it in in real life basically how wheelchair tennis works mm -hmm. and I love that you said that just because you train just as hard as you know as equal as a regular athlete or an able body bodied athlete would yeah. so I'm definitely on your side about that where you know Paralympians are definitely on the same you know uh, platform of training and putting all that effort into the sport um yeah, exactly. and with regard to training like what does your training schedule or regimen look like what do you do to kind of it's, it's different for every season basically so if i have a like this kind of season i am in now when i'm gonna go and compete i don't train as much i train about two hours of tennis every day and i go to the gym one hour every day to just to try and feel like fit and um, and then strong basically but then during winter periods where where you know you have about one month to break down your body and to try to get up again and get strong you, you practice about maybe between six and eight hours of tennis every day and then you put on some physical like gym or going on on the stamina training so it there's, there's a lot of difference there. It depends on the season, basically, uh, how much how much I push myself. But now I don't push myself too much, so I'm, 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 I'm quite happy about that. Okay. <laughs> and also, does that also affect your diet? Like you're only like concentrating on eating certain types of foods or what does your, your diet look like too during busy training season? Yeah, I haven't really been too busy about diets here and there I, I'm, I'm just eating what I want basically but of course um, I'm eating more when I practice more um, the, that that just comes to show 
Um, of course, I'm, I'm counting calories and stuff like that. Yeah. But as long as it's good enough, I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Even if it's a hamburger, I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, me too. When I just take a casual walk to my fridge, I'm already hungry. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, and another question tied to training, though. Um, when COVID started spreading, did that also affect your training schedule or how did that impact you last year um, with regard to going to the Paralympics? Yeah, it, it mostly impacted me with tournaments. Like like the whole ITF tour calendar basically got canceled pretty much. So I couldn't really go to any tournaments. That was the biggest issue. But in Sweden, we do, haven't had any lockdowns or anything like that. So I've been a, able to practice and stuff like that. But unfortunately, I got uh, a hip problem last year. It's still with me today, um, and I'm probably going to have a surgery after Tokyo, as it looks like right now. But uh, uh, So it made me not be able to practice as much. Uh, but I've been more into the physical and gym side uh, of things to, to, to go and get stronger there, and that's been working out perfectly. It's just a little bit lack of uh, tennis on, on a tennis course because the hip doesn't want to be on the tennis court as much. Otherwise, it's been quite fine. And it's been very nice to be home with my family and not being away for a half a year, basically. Yeah, understood. I'm sure it's wonderful. Um, in addition to that, I also saw on your Instagram that you do kayaking too. Is that more of a hobby or you're looking to like you go in sports mode when you're going kayaking? <laughs> Definitely a hobby. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to... I've been looking for some alternatives just to, to enjoy as well. And kayaking is perfect because you get into the nature and and stuff like that pretty easy with it. And you, you just feel like you can't go everywhere in the woods with a wheelchair, like you, you probably know. Uh, and it's just easier to get in the kayak and you just feel like, yeah, you belong there. You're so close to the water. Um, seeing nice good spots and i can just enjoy for a whole day basically it's 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 beautiful for sure <laughs> i love that it's really really cool um kind of going back to your wheelchair though um so how is it modified for like when you're playing tennis as opposed to like your daily wheelchair um mm -hmm. like every day yeah it's basically like it's, it's two different types of wheelchairs like the everyday wheelchair looks like anybody else except i have a seat on yeah i actually have it here i can show okay. how it looks um like you can see i have a bucket on it yeah but otherwise it's basically the same what we did we did the uh, a little bit longer for the legs so i can get my legs in there um my tennis wheelchair is unfortunately packed in the corner so you can't see it oh it's okay <laughs> But um, but uh, the, the the biggest difference is probably the angle of the where the wheels are the, the back wheels like they are really tilted like twenty two degrees okay just to get stability and fast turning uh, and then you have an extra wheel at the back uh, a small one uh, just so you can lean backwards to uh, and not fall over and stuff like that so just for serves or smashes or difficult shots. You yeah. can always lean quite far back to to get to those kind of shots. Wow. Yeah. Basically, was, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no problem. It's basically like a, a basketball wheelchair, you could say. Okay, cool. Do you also play basketball wheelchair? I did when I was younger, but I don't really have time for it anymore as a dad. So. Um, I, I gave that up, but it's still fun to do sometimes. But tennis has always been my calling. Understood. All right. And after Tokyo, I was kind of wondering what your your plans would be in, in terms of wheelchair tennis. For example, would you want to like mentor or coach uh, like young tennis players wanting to go into the Paralympics? Like what, what does that look like for you? Oh, well, that's a question I ask myself daily as well, what I want to do. <laughs> um, one part of me really wants to do that, like coach younger players and really do that. Uh, but that means being away a lot from the family as well, because 
where I live, I would have to travel quite far to to go to reach these kids. Um, but but it's still like tennis is my passion, and I would love to do that. But in the same time, I would probably need to do something else. So at the moment, I'm going to study, and I'm going to do like teaching in on the side and stuff like that, and just have fun basically. Try to do that. Oh, and you said studying. What are you studying currently? Um, now I'm studying what I missed in school because I started quite early <laughs> with wheelchair tennis. So I skipped a little bit of school, okay. uh, quite a lot actually. Um, so uh, I'm still studying that. So I'm still studying a lot of math at the moment. Uh, math and uh, chemistry. That's basically those two things I'm in at the moment. And then hopefully if everything goes as planned, I will go for an, uh, what do you call that in English? Engineering program of Ooh. energy in next autumn. Wow. Okay. Those are all subjects I'm very terrible at. So I commend you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of, I'm, I'm quite interested in like energy, like renewable energy, solar powered, water powered, stuff like that. So uh, that's what I'm looking for at the moment, but it can change. You never know. Gotcha. So let's pretend like you weren't doing tennis. What do you think you'd be doing, um, as like a career or like passion? Wow. I don't really think about that so much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm asking all the hard questions. <laughs> Um, I do like woodworking, like I do a lot of woodworking back home. Um, oh, cool. that. Um, might have done something like that, but it doesn't really pay the bills too much. So I might have, I might have studied earlier to become like a engineer or, or something like that. But uh, I don't really know. Uh, it's a little bit of a scary question, actually. I like tennis too much. <laughs> no, I mean stay in tennis as long as you can you know it seems like such a wonderful sport and I've seen some of your videos and like you competing it's yeah. so intense I <laughs> I was watching a couple of them in Wimbledon um, that you were competing in and I just could not stop watching I was so <laughs> anxious <laughs> no but it looks wonderful and I just wish you all the best of luck in Tokyo um so I do have a couple of fan questions here um, yep. for you to answer. So we have one that says, do you drink coffee or tea? And when you compete, do you just drink water only? <laughs> um, yes, I drink coffee. Quite a yes. lot of coffee. <laughs> person, I have to drink coffee. <laughs> That's just in my DNA, basically. <laughs> same um, i wake up so grumpy without coffee <laughs> yeah 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 i'm um, not at tea at all no I, I can imagine that it's much better with coffee isn't it <laughs> oh yeah um yeah. and when you compete do you also have a cup of coffee before you go like on the court it depends on the time actually um uh, more if i'm starting to feel a little bit tired i could have a like like a small coffee or something like that but Mostly I, I just have water and uh, some kind of, uh, uh, like now I'm into raisins, I'm having that for some extra energy. And then I have some sports uh, drink as well, just to try to, to, to be uh, even leveled all the time and, and be, be as pumped as possible. I, you need more than just water for it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm very glad you are a coffee drinker like me because I don't understand the love for tea. I respect people who drink tea, but that's not my thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, the second question that we have is, do you have a favorite quote that motivates you or inspires you every time you kind of need to refocus? It used to be go hard or go home. Now I don't really use it too much. I think yeah. I'm starting to get a little bit too old and I'm starting to get <laughs> a little bit like I know how already what, what I have to do to, to get on, in shape and do all of that. But when you were younger and you were searching for stuff, it was better to just, yeah, go hard or go home, basically. 
it, it was one of those saying, otherwise we, we go for this, do a three hour session of tennis and then stop or we just go home before because it, then it doesn't really matter. Gotcha. Wait, three hours? Is it usually three hours of just... No, it's like this is during the, 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 the tough season. Like then, then you have two... Uh, uh, you start at nine in the morning, you, you practice at 12, then you have lunch and then you start at one again and do three more hours. But this is just during one month, basically, where you try to break down the body as much as possible to, to get it back in, into a good and fit level for, for January again. Man, you are making me tired just thinking about that. Like, just I was on the treadmill this morning and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's just for like 30 minutes. <laughs> it's not my favorite month. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah, understood. Um, we have one more here and it's kind of just about the kids. And do you have any advice for kids with arthroporiposis or um, anyone who's just in, in the younger generation wanting to get into sports? Try as much as possible. It doesn't really matter what uh, or, or what, but just try whatever you want to try. Even if it doesn't work the first time, go there, take, try a couple of times. You might regret yourself that you don't do it and just enjoy. Like that's, that's what, what got me started. Just trying out, see what happens. And I just enjoyed so much that I wanted to try to get it a, as a career. Um, maybe somebody else wants to do it as well. So just try it, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter if it's kayaking, basketball, um, uh, golf. It, it could be anything. Just go out there, try it, see if you enjoy it. I love it. Uh, and actually, I don't know if you mentioned this before, but how many sports did you try until you found like tennis or Ooh. wanted to do tennis? Um, how many did I try? I tried... Well, maybe around 10, uh, 10 different uh, uh, sports. I tried sit ski, like downhill, uh, downhill oh, alpine. Um, I tried basketball. Well, I still sometimes I could play basketball still. It's quite fun. Um, then we have a sport called floorball in Sweden. Ooh, it's, what is that? It's, um, it's basically a mixture between hockey and uh, what would I say more? Maybe lacrosse? No, no, probably not. But <laughs> it's, it's an easier version of hockey, you could say. You have a stick, you have a ball, um, and you go around in the wheelchair instead of on ice. Oh, uh, nice. And then, of course, from Sweden, you have to try hockey. So I tried hockey. <laughs> um, and like table tennis, there, there's so many more. I think it's great sailing uh, for a little bit. That wasn't really my thing. Um, uh, what more? Oh, there's so much. Yeah, there, there's a, there's at least five, six more there that, that you can fit in that I've tried. I basically tried everything around my county there, like marathon um, wheelchairing as well, Whoa. stuff like that. It's, it's, just, it's just been a lot, but yeah, I, I found, found my sport for... Uh, and never looked back after that <laughs> man i admire you like i i'm open to trying things but after maybe like two three tries of something i just kind of leave it alone sometimes <laughs> so just you trying yeah. literally so many sports it's it's admirable yeah it's just i think i'm a i'm, I'm just a sports nerd geek yeah the, yeah. the, the love <laughs> To do, do that kind of stuff i love to break down my body and just try different things like i said with kayaking now in the in the past um th that also it's admiring to another way to try out how my body will feel if i try this or if i try that during that time so it's i don't know it's just the nerd in me that, that wants to try a lot of stuff i understand that um and with you being in wheelchair tennis and going to Tokyo, um, do your kids also show an interest in sports or? Uh, my oldest kid is four years old. So he just started a little bit, like he looked 
loves soccer and he loves tennis Ooh. at the moment we will see what what happens there but <laughs> but it, like we, we just try to encourage him to to get into sports and have fun with it and then what he wants to do we will see later on basically and the youngest one is just seven months old so oh. she uh, yeah <laughs> we, we haven't taught her anything she has her own little tennis racket of course but oh, so nothing, <laughs> oh man well are you hoping one of your kids get into a tennis it would be fun yes um but i don't know um it's a tough life as well like there's a lot i, I started like traveling on my own when I was 13 and I'm starting to feel sick of all the traveling and stuff. So I don't know. Um, as long as they enjoy, they can do whatever sport they want. As long as they do a sport. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Understood. Man. Well, that's so cool. They get to call their dad a Paralympian. So that, that is just, that is so awesome. Um, oh, does your wife play any sports too? Or... Yeah, she plays a little bit. I got in, got her into uh, tennis as well. Um, but she, she played floorball before, which Ooh. is this crazy Swedish hockey thing. Um, which this is actually how we met on on the floorball field, basically. So oh, love story. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. So, so who, who spoke to who first? Did you say hello first? uh i do not remember that that's too long ago <laughs> uh, i think it's 12 years now uh so it's um i think it might have been her that started speaking with me oh yeah oh that's so cute a sports love story i'm here for it that should be a netflix movie now <laughs> <laughs> i will literally write a letter <laughs> oh man well yeah. thank you so much for sharing your journey i i know that everyone here we're super excited for for your journey to tokyo we definitely I'm, I'm not sure if you're able to share too much like um like on instagram when you get to tokyo are you allowed to like take like pictures or anything like that i'm allowed to take pictures but i like i really have to read through i haven't read through the all the uh all the papers yet so i don't really know what i can take pictures of or what or not I'm, I'm thinking more of i'll take some pictures i'll put them out and if somebody gets like yeah you can't do that i'll just take them off okay <laughs> well um yeah we definitely will be watching your page and just making just keeping up with you and by the by the way do you know when you're competing specifically like do you know your schedule uh, the schedule is between the 27th of uh, August to the 4th of uh, September, but uh, the draw is going to be made, I think it was the 25th of August, um, and the schedule should come out the 26th. So I don't really know what times or anything like that, but I, as I'm a, one of the seeded players, I'll probably uh, start the 28th of August, but more than that, I don't really know. Okay, no problem. Well, I'll be checking the, the Paralympics website so we can try to catch you um, while you compete. And yeah. sure that I think we can... everything's gonna be out on my Instagram as well. So you'll probably see it from there as well. Oh, okay, perfect, that's way easier. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for speaking with me and just, um, just all about who you are. We are very excited to watch your journey. And even after Tokyo, we'd love to reconnect and see how the whole experience was. Um, and Definitely. That sounds great. For sure. Um, yeah. But overall, um, thank you everyone for joining us. We'll be putting the recording of this interview on our website and YouTube channel. And we'll be sharing that shortly later today. Um, and overall, definitely comment below. Wish Stefan good luck and that we will be watching him while he competes. Um, but I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And to you too, Stefan. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, guys.